Welcome back, Chappelle. Let's turn it over a little bit, right? My little flipping area, the backdrop. Uh, now, really quick, uh, let's get after it, all right? Let's like, you know what? It's just not even waste time. Let's just go. All right, so today in class, we reviewed our ancient Greek time periods, right? All eight of them. Um, we kind of made sure everybody has them written down, yeah. We talked about the map quiz itself, which is going to be... All of you are going to have it on... Monday, which is Green Day, except for my F period, right? My F period, you will actually have it on Tuesday, all right? So they're going to be doing a lot of other stuff on Monday as well, uh, and on our green, respective Green and White days as well, kind of just kind of getting up, moving around, getting after some different stuff. Now, uh, this is where we left off, though, today in class, right? We started talking about the Palace of Kenosis, right? And if some of my class right now are like, we're past this already, we'll stop complaining, all right? So because we've got to talk about some cool stuff, all right? So now... The neat thing about it is the Palace of Kenosis, you've already probably heard about in English already, right? So Kenosis is actually located on the island of Crete, actually right there, all right? So it is the central location and political center for the entire Minoan kingdom, right? So we believe that the Minoans also had a centralized form of government, right? I heard somebody say that today, I think it was... Can't remember. All right. So, but anyway, now, but yeah, a centralized form of a government, right? So, and then we talked about briefly, like how the style of which it was built in, it was home to a legendary king, Minos, and then it was built in the style of a labyrinth, right? Now, a labyrinth, if you haven't seen the really, really ridiculous David Bowie movie from the late 1980s, uh, is a maze like structure. Right, So a structure that has tons of different hallways and it's hard to navigate. But before we get there, before we get there, let's kind of marvel for a brief moment at the amazing kind of foundational aspects of Greek culture that exist at the Palace of Kenosis. All right, So Palace of Kenosis used a lot of different architectural principles that are super, super important when it comes to Greek construction. Right, so y'all are about to draw something. All right, so one big, big important thing about oh, the Palace of Kenosis is a, of course, one of their building perspectives. Right, the use of pillars. Now, so some of y'all are immediately like, Mr. Terry, I've done an enormous amount of research, and I am of the understanding that the Persians actually came up with the pillars first, um, bull top pillars that they used at the uh, capital of Persepolis. Okay, Lexus, calm down. All right, so like, let me let me help these kids out a little bit, all right? I understand that you know all that stuff. But columns are actually super important when it comes to the Greeks because they actually use them as a major form of construction, and some of our earliest signs of them actually exist at the Palace of Kenosis, giving us impetus that the Minoan culture uh, is very, very important, and it actually helped set the bedrock for some of these... Oh, God, that's like really close. Uh, for some of these different uh, Greek perspectives, right? So now looking at these co these columns right here in the back, you have to understand that there are three types of columns, right? So three types of columns that kind of define the Greeks, and they change as the eras progress, all right? So as time progresses through the ancient Greek time periods, they actually look a little bit different. And I'm going to draw all of them, all right? So really fast, the first ones you have are Doric columns, right? The Doric column is the one you see right here at the Palace of Kenosis, right? It has a simple base, right? Just kind of cut off right there, and then it just goes down, right? That's a Doric column, okay? So, and whoop. And then you have an Ionic column, referencing, of course, to the area of Ionia, right, as things progress, right? An Ionic column looks kind of like this. Reminds me of Hercules every time I see it, right? So, the Disney movie, anyway. That is what an ionic column looks like, right? An ionic column has these little swirly guys on the top, right? And then the last one you have is a Corinthian column, right? So Corinthian columns showed up towards the later half of the Greek era and also under Roman occupation when the Romans actually came and took them over. Now, Corinthian columns, very difficult to draw, so I'm going to do my best, all right? And then you can look them up if you have any trouble. But a Corinthian column kind of has the pedestal-like column like you're supposed to or the pillar, and then it's got these... Actually, this isn't terrible. It looks like these leaves that actually come out of the top of it, right? So that's like a Corinthian column, okay? So you have three different types of column structures, and they all had their start or their beginnings in Greek culture at the Palace of Kenosis, right? So it's an amazing thing to actually know, understand that these architectural principles were, oh, whoa, hold on, we're going the wrong way. These architectural principles actually lasted, um, spread, and became like a cornerstone of Greek culture, right? So, 
That right there, of course, is the Palace of Kenosis itself. You can actually see some of the inner workings of it, all the hallways, the smaller rooms, right? The labyrinth style. And as you can tell, it is not a convertible style house, but the roof is no longer there, all right? So, however, you can see just the amazing intricacies of the architecture, like multiple walls, sets of stairs, open, like, designs. Like, it's a very, very intense building. And then, of course, that is the throne room legendary king minus i know a lot of y'all are like that looks like a toilet all right so like it kind of does all right but that is actually supposed to be the throne and this is supposed to be an offering plate possibly for religious ceremonies possibly for tax collecting services we really don't know all right we're not absolutely positive but that is the throne room and the amazing thing about it you can see as well is the artwork on the walls the frescoes are what we talked about today right some renaissance difficulty level art that is permanently emblazoned on these walls and will never fade as long as it is not subject to the elements. All right, so uh, uses like plaster, it dries, permanent, amazingly gorgeous as well. And here's the big one, the kicker, the most important thing that no one's came up with, that for some reason all of Europe and everyone forgot until the Romans came around. That's right, plumbing. All right, so yeah, right here is a very, very rudimentary form of plumbing. Actually, people would go to the bathroom, right, in Kenosis, not like in the floor or anything, that's disgusting. All right, so in their certain areas, and then a stream flowed underneath the palace and it would carry the waste away, all right? So some of you are like, plumbing's not that big of a deal. When we get to medieval Europe and we start talking about people hucking their like human waste out into the streets and spreading disease, you'll understand why plumbing is so important. Just plumbing, so important. The Romans had it too aqueducts amazing things and then they fall and everything hits the fan literally that hits the fan all right so it's insane so anyway but this is what we believe kenosis looked like when it was fully constructed look how gorgeous thing looks it is actually I, it's one of those things that if i had a time machine i think this would be one of the a lot of people ask me there's like well, if you could go back in time blah, blah, blah. they always ask about meeting people i always like to actually look at it as well as seeing structures in their glory and i think kenosis would be one of the ones that i would definitely want to see and it's utmost glory, right? So, but that is Kenosis. Look at the courtyard, which actually, fun fact, is going to be a major design element of Greece as well. Courtyards and uh, different altar areas were actually a major, major enduring principle of Greek architecture. And then, of course, is the floor plan. Now, there, that is really quick. If you don't know what a labyrinth is, that is what it is. It's like a maze-style palace, right? It's very, very hard to navigate because of all the walls, the narrow hallways, and things like that. But there's also a very famous story about this particular labyrinth has to do with the Minotaur, all right? The Minotaur, and I believe it's Theseus. Yeah, Theseus and the Minotaur, all right? Now, I will tell you that story tomorrow if you remind me. Be like, Mr. Terry, you told us you would tell us that myth about Theseus so we could go up to our English teachers, like Mr. Cotton and Mr. Stein, and rub it in their face, all right? So, and I'll be like, <laughs> okay. All right, so we can definitely do that. Now, but just remind me tomorrow to tell you the myth, and I'll tell it to you. Now, also, some other major leaps forward. Some Minoan art actually depicts female priests, right? Which is unheard of in any ancient Western civilization. You did not hear of equality in religion among, with female representatives in any major ancient civilization with the exception of the Minoans, right? To think for a moment, had they survived and prospered, maybe sexism in that field would not have actually existed, right? One of their chief goddesses is actually a female herself. She's actually clutching two snakes in her hands right there. And then, of course, female priestesses, like I said, were a major element of their society. It's absolutely insane. And then, of course, Min Minoans successfully created frescoes as well. The very first frescoes that the world had ever seen. Now, what a fresco is, I know I've talked about frescoes like four times already, and some of you are like, oh my god, this guy really likes art. Have you seen my room? Of course I really like art. All right, so now frescoes are a form of art where you use wet plaster and wet paint, and they're very, 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 very difficult to do. All right, so they're extremely difficult because, like even for modern day artists, due to their just intricacy, right? You have to actually mix different elements together. And as you can see, it's done in a grid style format. You see how like the edges right here? So they would actually do it in grids, right? And they're actually called in Italian, it's called a giornato. Uh, giornato is the, uh, the area, the grid by grid structure, right? And you would do one giornato at a time, right? And then you would actually form this thing called the intonaco, which is actually the undried plaster. You would mix all that together and you would paint it on there and then paint over top of it and it would dry. So very famous frescoes that are gonna develop later on and get much more intense towards the Renaissance are places like the roof of the Sistine Chapel, right? Uh, Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper, we'll talk about all of those. Actually, you'll become experts in them in the 
you'll know, present them to me. And I love art, so we're good. This is another really, really cool one that is about Minoan culture. This is a Minoan woman farming or harvesting saffron flowers. Saffron flowers began to be became to be a very major delicacy in a lot of different foods, a very wealthy food. Saffron sauce is actually a very, very good thing. It's actually used the stamen of that specific flower to actually create different sauces and spices and things like that. It's one of the only spices or spice derivatives that actually really exists in Europe, right? Because pepper and uh, cumin and uh, ginger and all your other spices exist in Asia, all right? So, but yeah, so that's a major thing right there. And then also this. Ah, a golden bronze metallurgically made cup. All right, so some of you are like, it's just a cup. It's not that big of a deal. All right, so well, the bigger deal is where it was found. All right, so now that cup right there is majorly important because this is Minoan art. And as you can see, the development, like just the exact absolute development of their art and their culture, the crazy part is where it was found, right? It's actually found in a Mycenaean tomb. Some of you are like, who are they? We're getting there. All right, so now... The thing about it is no one is really positive why the Minoans ended, but we do know they came to a crashing halt. Because about in 1400 BC, control of the sea and of Crete passed to these people known as the Mycenaeans, right? So the Mycenaeans were originally their allies who have then later on became their rivals, right? Because you can see this overlap period, right? The Mycenaean period ranges from about 1600 to 1100 BC, where the heck did these people come from? The Mycenaeans originally came from the grasslands of southern Russia. They were a migratory Paleolithic style people, right? And then from southern Russia, they started to migrate down and then they wandered and they wandered and they found a home on the region of Greece called Peloponnese, all right? That's the large southern chunk that I'm gonna show you in like two seconds. They're gonna trade with the Minoans. And they're gonna learn a ton from them, right? Architectural principles. They're gonna learn a lot of different little odds and ends, but the crazy thing about that they had that was much more advanced than the Minoans is they were much more intense when it comes to the way that they would actually fight, okay? So, because here's the thing, the Mycenaeans lived in peace with the Minoans up until about 1500 BC, when many historians believe that they have destroyed and attacked them, right? So, because here's why, right? We believe that the Mycenaean people have two phases of their culture, all right? So they have this thing called the Shaft Grave Era, which is basically just a big, 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 big tunnel. And I'll draw it for you tomorrow because we're going to stop right here, right? The Shaft Grave Era, which is actually where they would dig down and have a small tomb down here with some possessions and items inside of it and things like that. And then they would bury it up, right? And we believe, actually, that the very, very famous king of theirs, King Agamemnon, was actually buried down there, right? That right there is actually the top of one of the shaft graves, and I'll show you this again tomorrow. And then a lot of different items were found down there. Bronze swords and weapons were found at the bottom of them. These right here were actually Mycenaean warrior helmets made out of boar tusks, right? So they actually had a very intense military structure, right? And this, of course, is Agamemnon's death mask, but we'll talk about him tomorrow. And then it moved into a Mycenaean period of extreme development, right? Now, something you have to understand about ancient civilizations, no one who's super developed doesn't spread their influence, right? When you feel more developed than your competitors, you go after them, right? And you take them over. So that's called the Quinae era, also known as the Beehive Burial Era, right? Because they used, started to actually make tombs that looked like this, like pyramids in a sense built underground, right? There's one of them in New Orleans that I'll actually try and find a picture of. Uh, it's a very, very similar style. But yeah, it's called the Beehive Burial Period, where they would actually, their architecture and their intelligence took a dramatic leap forward, right? The Minoans just hadn't helped them. They probably would have been better off. So we're going to stop here, and they would have like sheep sacrifices and stuff. I'll get to it later. We're going to stop right here, all right? And then we're going to talk about the Mycenaeans and how they took over the rest of Greece and the Bronze Age collapse tomorrow, all right? So I hope you guys have a great evening. I'll see you guys then. Have a good one.